Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. And today I'm going to share a story. It's story time. So I know at Above Life Channel, you see me as a medium and a psychic doing that portion of my work. That's a small kind of slice of the work that I do. And I thought it would be a really good idea to start sharing a few stories about my experiences when I actually did in-person work with people, some of the different kinds of experiences I've had. This one in particular really hits home. And it just happened recently. So from about 2004 until 2013, 14, I would do um, in-person groups. I'd be invited to someone's home or a business and I would do a group, what we consider in the mediumship psychic world as a gallery reading. You know, you used to see those on TV, you know, ga gallery readings like John Edwards and such. He would do like a gallery where there's a group of people and then you just, well, the, the spirit either shows up or the person asks the question and you connect with a loved one or a friend, etc., from the afterlife for that particular person. And different psychics work differently as far as how that all operates. And we can talk about that in another video if you're interested to know kind of how I did that. But I stopped doing that. And I'll also do another video and can explain why I stopped doing that. So it, it was a big portion of, of the work that I did in helping people to, to recover from grief to heal and to make those those connections to really bring peace, right? It was a lot of, it was very rewarding, but it was a lot of really being willing to be with people in their grief. And that's a tough place to be, as you well know, especially if you've encountered a loss. And in this story, all right, I um, it has to do with my family. All right, so my daughter is in college. You've heard me talk about her if you watch my Fairy Grasshopper YouTube channel where I talk about vlog, my vlog and such about psychic, my psychic life. And um, she's in college and a couple, about a month or so ago, she was uh, home for the weekend. Her boyfriend lives about an hour and 20 minutes from our house. And they were hanging out. Her boyfriend that she met when she went to college. So college is like two hours away. Boyfriend happens to live like an hour and 20 minutes away from us. So that's that's good, like pretty close, relatively speaking. And she met him at school. First they were friends in the same friend group and then they started dating. So they've been dating for like quite a while now. And so she was home one weekend visiting his parents and while the boys were watching some kind of sporting event on television, she was hanging out with his mom and they were having a conversation about mediums and psychics. It just kind of came up, they were talking and, and his mom shared how he had this, they had this experience with a psychic medium and how it really helped their family and how it was just a profound healing moment for them and really helped them to move on, you know, move forward with their new normal, you know? And, and so if that was enough, that would be lovely because then my daughter would have a different perspective of the work that I do. She's not super interested in it, but she doesn't like, it's not like a, a totally avoidant of it, but she doesn't do any, she doesn't use card decks. She doesn't do crystal stuff. She doesn't do mediumship. My daughter doesn't do any of the stuff that I do by choice, you know? And so when, people ask what I do, all my kids, my big kids usually say um, that I do, I'm a life coach because that's the core, that's the foundation of the work that I do in my private sessions is I'm a life coach. I'm actually a certified life coach and I have a background in human resources, organizational development and learning, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I have that part too. So if I didn't have any of the psychic stuff, I could just be doing that. But I'm an intuitive coach because I blend the psychic and the spiritual and hearing your inner voice with the coaching. So they usually just say it, she's a life coach. Well, so then they gave my daughter the opportunity to say, well, my mom does that. My mom does some of that. Again, I'm like, ooh, opening up, you know, opening up her mind a little bit to kind of understanding a little better maybe what I do, right? I mean, you guys know what I do, but she's not really, it's like, whatever. She's like a teenager, uh, whatever. And so that was cool, had that been enough. Well, my daughter said, oh yeah, you can see my mom's, um, um, my mom's YouTube channel. And she showed her a picture of me 
or pulled up a video or something like something along those lines, pulled up a video, showed her a picture or whatever. And she said, what's your mom's name? <laughs> she told her and she said, can you ask your mom if she remembers being at a group in November of whatever year it was, it was like 10 years ago. And if she knows this person and she was, first she said, do you know this person? And I said, yes. I texted my daughter back and said, yes, I do. It's been a while since I've talked to her, but yes, I do. And then she said, well, do you remember doing a group? And I said, yes, I do. And it was a very powerful group, by the way. It was extremely powerful because the reason why I was invited to this family's home was for to celebrate the life, a birthday for one of their children who had completed suicide a couple of years prior to that. And so family was there. Grandparents on both sides was there, were there for this, this reading, this group reading. And also friends from support group, a support group for, for parents who lost children to suicide. And so there was a lot of loss, a lot of grief energy, but also this hope energy so it was a unique environment to to have this this group session so it was very very memorable for me and there was this one family in particular that i i usually you guys have to talk about this a little bit but i usually when i'm doing a a group like that there is one moment at least one sometimes there's more than one but where you're i'm like i was gonna say you're like there's this moment where you're oh, this is why I'm here. This was the reason. This is the purpose. This is why I'm here at this time in this moment to do this work right here, right now. This is the purpose. And it was this family, this couple who was very, just so heartbroken by the loss of their son and who had completed suicide and just really just at a, such a crossroads having such a hard time of course very struggling with this loss and I just was so drawn into both of them the dad and the mother especially the dad and they had a younger son also and so there was a lot of there was just so much energy and so much information and I was like zoomed in on them we were together like a magnet and the entire background of all the other people the whole reason why we were there uh, just kind of faded away and it was just the three of us plus this beautiful spirit of this young boy who was sharing so much so much and so heartfelt and we were like just everything disappeared but the three of us and him his energy just came in and was just it was so powerful very profound I remember it deeply and Oftentimes, too, when I'm doing sessions like that, when I was doing in person, especially with groups, I would bring, I would carry this amethyst. I should show it. I don't think it's in here. I have a couple of different versions of it, of an amethyst that I, it sits in the palm of my hand and I can hold it while I'm talking to the group, while I'm channeling, while I'm, I'm using my discernment to, to determine which spirit I'm talking to, which family, etc. And it helps me just stay grounded, an amethyst. And you might be like, well, why an amethyst? Because it's to me, it's a balancing of masculine feminine energy. It's honoring the crown chakra and the divine feminine, which I love the divine feminine energy. And amethyst also happens to be my birthstone. It's a very grounded stone to me, a very confident stone, a very supportive stone. And so I, I, I often will carry it. So I was holding this in my hand. I mean, so much that the little points were like creating creases in my hand. You guys, I remember this so clearly. It was like 10 years ago. Such a defining moment for, for this family. So special for me to be part of it, to be able to be there and, and assist in this connection. Just so healing. Everyone around was in tears and just, it was like everyone's heart just opened to whatever grief they were feeling for their own losses. They just, their hearts just cleared and everybody was in this love and compassion energy. It was just like showering over. It was amazing. I even, I get, I'm like just feeling body chills while I'm talking about this because it was so beautiful, you guys, so beautiful. And so I pick up the phone, not texting, and I call my daughter and I say, oh my God, I said, and I said the mom's name and I said, I need to, I need to talk to her, put me on speaker. And she said, 
Bridget, oh my God, Bridget. I said, oh my God, oh my God. I'm like, oh, oh my God, how are you? I had channeled their son. It was their son. My daughter met this boy at college uh, who had suffered a terrible loss, the loss of his brother by suicide. I actually, it turns out I actually met my daughter's boyfriend before she did, <laughs> 10 years ago, because he was there that day. You can't, I mean, and let me be clear. So this group that I did 10 years ago was like 40 minutes from my house south of me. And this family lived closer to the college at that time. So they were like good two hour drive away. And now they're actually closer. They're about an hour and 20 minutes. But so they've moved and all that. And to have it be, I mean, and so then my daughter was like, oh my gosh, mom, you have no idea. My, mom, my daughter couldn't believe it. My daughter and I had this really profound conversation and she said, mom, you won't believe it. You can't believe how much you helped them. They are like, they can't, you helped them. You really helped them. You gave them so much peace. You, you, I can't, she's like, mom, I, you can't, I can't tell you how much you helped. You made such a difference for them, mom. I'm like, yeah, that's the work I do. I'm like, I'm like, huh, yeah, do it every day, man. Do it every day. <laughs> After my daughter, I'm like, yeah, what do you think I've been doing for the last? 15 years. What do you think I do when I haul up in the office or close the bedroom and put chairs in front of the, the doorway so nobody walks in by accident when I'm working? Are you kidding me? I'm like, I t this is like a day in the life, you know? And I was just like, yeah, like, yeah, uh-huh. And she's like, mom, you don't understand. I said, Meg, I said, Megs, yes, I do. I, <laughs> I do understand. It, it happens. <laughs> And I am blessed to be part of that experience. That's it, I'm not doing it, I'm just showing up. Just like they had the courage to show up that day too. Because they had talked to other mediums and it just wasn't the same kind of a experience. I was just in the right place at the right time with an open heart and I connected with the, the family and then I allowed that to happen. It was all the right ingredients, you know? It was just perfect. And she took a picture of this curio cabinet where they have an angel and a picture of their son and just like a little remembrance space for him. And right in front of that was the amethyst I had given to them. The one that I had carried in my palm that day, I gave it to them as a gift and they still have it. With the moves that they've had, a couple of moves and all that, they still have it. And she took a picture and sent it to me and I'm like, oh, that's wonderful. So I actually had a chance, so this happened about a month ago, I actually had a chance to just actually see them like two weekends ago in person. I went out to their house and I just saw them, gave them hugs, even though it's that, you know, social distancing time. I just, oh my gosh, loved them up. And it was just awesome to see them. It was, it's so weird. We're like, oh my gosh, this is so weird. This is so weird. It's even weird for me. And I'm like a psychic and I talk to dead people and talk to angels and I talk to, I see energy stuff. I'm like, I have a lot of stories that are weird. This is amazingly weird. So I wanted to share that with you today. I'm sure that um, my daughter won't mind that I shared <laughs> and the family I know won't mind. Suicide is a very, very difficult thing to heal with, through, from. You can't ever, it's not like, it doesn't, it's just a new normal. And it's a form of grief like I've never felt as an empath. I, I am fortunate that I haven't had anybody directly connected to me, but my daughter's had people that she's lost from suicide. And I know family members that have had those experiences with friends and things and coworkers and all that. And being in a room with people where many of them had experienced that, and especially the loss of a child through suicide, it's so heart-wrenching. It's just hard, it's like being gutted. I just, it's a really, like they are so strong and I mean, love must just get them through day by day. And I just, I, it's such a, I don't even, there's not words to feel, to explain that kind of loss that just as an empath, just as an observer in that energy, what I felt was just so 
profound and deep and just just in incredibly heartbreaking. So because September has, is known for Suicide Prevention Month, and we're just coming out of September, I wanted to make sure that I shared this with you. If you or anyone that you know is in at risk or in danger of completing suicide or even contemplating, there are so many resources online. Google it up. There's hotlines, crisis hotlines, crisis helplines. There's lots of numbers that you can text or call or organizations that you can reach out to. Please don't just leave. Trust me, as a person who's, who's talked to spirit that have completed suicide, trust me, it, is, it creates so much pain for those who are left behind that I know that your own pain feels great and insurmountable at times, but you can move through this, whatever your this is, whatever mental health, physical experience you're having, you can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you and I believe that you're worth it. And just do what you can, moment to moment, day to day. Reach out for the help that you need. You deserve it, you deserve it. You deserve it and your family deserves it and your friends deserve it. There is someone, at least one person, a teacher, a relative, a neighbor, a best friend, a dog that will know your absence. And by the time you leave and you actually complete suicide, it's too late. It's too late. You can't change your mind and come back. Don't rush to that decision, okay? Don't, don't rush to that decision. I've seen the damage it does. I've seen, I felt just through others' experiences, not myself personally, but through others' pain, there is no way that, that anyone would ever choose that, to put other people through that. No matter how much pain you're in, you can, you can move through this. Whew. So this is Bridget with Above Life Channel. Thanks so much for watching this particular video. Just a story share about my work as a medium and from the years 2002 or 2004 to about 2014 just one of the stories that i have many and so i i'm going to share a few of them with you to kind of respect the path that i've walked up to this point and to share that with you to share the journey please take a moment to subscribe to the channel if you're inspired if you want to continue to inspire your spirit the goal is always to inspire your spirit to fill you with some hope and that might just get you by and then the goal is to get you to live your life to live it it's your life after it's yours like it's yours after all so live it just live it thank you for being here <laughs>